who am I? I studied political science in, uh, at the university in Lund. Uh, maybe not the normal way of uh, becoming an entrepreneur, but I realized that working for the Swedish state, which you're kind of supposed to do when you, when you study political science, uh, was really, really boring. So I um, decided to do something else. Um, I went into consulting. Did that for a couple of years, uh, worked as, uh, with the management consulting and training for some big Swedish companies like SAS and uh, Tetra Pak and some others. Uh, then I went into advertising, worked with advertising a couple of years, uh, had an advertising agency of my own. Um, had a large customer called Iveco uh, who built trucks, uh, a bit larger than this one. And uh, they needed a marketing uh, manager for the Nordic countries. So I worked with marketing of Iveco trucks in Sweden and Norway at that time. Um, I had a friend who um, <coughs> worked at a company called VM Data at that time, which is now CGI, one of the largest uh, ICT consultancy companies in Sweden. And they w needed a regional man manager down here. So I kind of thought, okay, trucks, computers, oh, it's more or less the same. If you have studied, you know, if you have studied political science, you, you don't really know what, you, you don't realize that things are complicated. You just think, okay, politics and uh, economics, that's complicated things. Uh, computers and trucks, that's kind of easy things. So I jumped into the ICT world, um, did that for a couple of years until uh, the ICT crisis. Uh, partly caused by a Swedish company called Boo.com, <laughs> um, um, came in 2001. Uh, then they decided to consolidate the business. Uh, and what we were doing were we were do working with user interface, uh, users, uh, training, and that wasn't really at that time core business for uh, ICT companies. So I did a management buyout. Uh, took 30 people with me, started uh, a training company here in Malmo, uh, got some cust customers that we worked with. And then after a couple of years, I sold it to a media company, went into the media sector, worked at a small uh, ICT company here in Malmo called Techniki Media, um, who did ICT solutions only for media. So. Uh, uh, in 2007, we built uh, SVT Play, for instance, which uh, was kind of a cool, cool ta task at that, that point. It's same, actually, the same. It's still the same technical solution that they that they use. Um, then I got this, you know, middle-aged man life crisis and decided to do something else. So I decided to quit my job, uh, go to Biarritz, learn to wave surf. I mean, I'm not from California like Michael here. So, oh, at some point, you, when, when you are in Sweden, you say, oh, I need to, I, you watch all these movies and you realize, oh, I need to go and learn how to wave surf. That's the coolest thing you can, can ever do. So I wanted to go to Beritz, but I actually got stuck in the Swedish uh, innovation system. Uh, worked for six years for something called Cluster 55, which was a cluster organization down here helping ICT startups uh, from Skåne uh, with internationalization main, mainly. We had a huge network all over Europe, Asia, US uh, with contacts and help people to grow their, grow their business. Um, uh, then I left uh, the public sector uh, bit more than a year ago now, founded Clusterland Sweden, which is uh, the organization that runs this uh, event. Uh, but at the same time, since I thought it was very boring to work only 40 hours per week, uh, I also decided to go into a couple of startups. So I'm part owner in um, four different startups at the moment. One of them do an intelligent watering can when that tells you when it's time to water your plants. Another one is a beer brewery up in Lanskrona. Um, the third one is uh, um, a company in Luxembourg. We build uh, a community for Chinese tourists that comes to Europe. And the fourth one is a company called Learning to, s to Sleep. We are 
sitting over at Mink doing cognitive behavior therapy for people with a sleeping disorder through a digital tool, a mobile application, and a back web, back web solution. So that's me. So I was thinking this. I will talk about accelerators and then Michael will talk about what to think about when you pitch and normally when you go into an accelerator program at some point they will say okay what's your business pitch so uh, so I will kind of leave that subject and talk more about what to think about when you choose an accelerator if you are a startup and should you go into an accelerator program at all and First of all, we need to kind of define what, what is an accelerator because now that has become kind of a generic word and everybody loves to say that, oh, we have an accelerator. And if you look at Europe three years ago, we almost had no accelerators at all. And now we have like, I think, 475 <laughs> accelerator programs, programs all over Europe. And you need to think about, okay, what is an accelerator really? And what, what is not an accelerator? What is just something else that they have called an accelerator? Um, from my perspective, <coughs> we have accelerators in Europe. There are maybe 20, 25 that I regard as accelerators following the original model from the US. And I will explain explain that later wh what I mean with that. So first of all, in order to call yourself an accelerator or go into, if you're looking to go into an accelerator program, you sh should, number one, start looking for those who kind of ha have a time limit. You will typically find accelerators who say, yes, come to our, our accelerator program. Everything is open. You can come here and sit uh, for how short or long time you want, and uh, uh, we will help you to grow your business. That could be a good idea, but probably it's not, because from my experience, you perform be best if you have kind of a deadline for what you do. And that's the good thing with accelerator programs, that normally somebody have made up their mind saying that we will grow businesses in three months or six months. And why is that good? It's good because then you push yourself to do something in a very short time period. Most of the accelerators pro accelerator programs are have a time duration of three months. And that was also the original American the US model that was created in, in um, I think it was Massachusetts, Massachusetts at some, some point, uh, where uh, tech stars decided to start kind of the first accelerator and they decided, okay, let's do something else than a normal incubator where you are 24 months. Let's do something shorter and much more intense. And three months, it's kind of a good period to press yourself and work really, really hard. So the first thing you should look for is, okay, find those that have a time limit. That's important. The second one is that there are a lot of accelerator programs that will not give you any funding. <laughs> Most of them are publicly funded. And that's fine. If you already have an investor in your company, okay, maybe that's fine. Then you can sit somewhere and get help from mentors and, and so on. But the normal thing is that you have your team, you have your business ID, you have maybe you have made a prototype, you have done something, but you need some additional funding to get started. And you also need some additional funding to survive because maybe you are sitting here in Malmö and you realize that, okay, my business will grow better if I move to Berlin. It cost, will cost you money to live in Berlin for three months, right? So you, you should f find somebody that will give you some initial funding. On the other hand, then you need to be prepared to also give away some equity. If we look at accelerators in, in Europe, 
the main accelerators that we have, like Wira, Techstars, uh, uh, Springer, Startup Bootcamp, normally they give they they give you in the range between twenty and fifty thousand euros, and for that they will normally take ten percent equity. So. Question number two, of course, if you're looking into accelerators and you want to find an accelerator that will give you some funding, you have to ask yourself the important question, am I willing to give away equity? And that question is not that easy to answer because if you run a startup and you are thinking of, I am going for word domination. I'm building the next Microsoft or Spotify or Minecraft or something. Then you probably need to raise money in a seed round and in an A round and a late A round and a B round and so on and so on. And which means that you don't want to give away too much equity in the beginning. So maybe it's better to go somewhere where you get less money for a smaller part of equity instead of a lot of money for 10%. Because 10% in that startup phase is quite, I, I'm sure that Michael can kind of refer to that because he works with a lot with, with investors. But I mean, if you give away 10% already in the team phase, <laughs> Then you probably give away another 10% in your seed phase, and then in your A round, maybe you give away 20 or 30%, and then you suddenly you are diluted heavily when you go into the B round, and you end up with owning only 20 or 15% of your company. And I spoke with a friend of mine in, in San Francisco, and, and he said that investors are looking a lot at that right now because they realize that if you only suddenly owe 20% of your company, then the incentive for you to work really, really hard <laughs> is lower, right? So you need to kind of think from the beginning, how much am I willing to give, give away? And what do I think the next step and the next step? You're, the, the, I mean, this is like playing chess. You need to think in three or four steps ahead before you decide where to go. Thirdly, of course, a good accelerator should provide you with some office space, a location where you meet. Why? Because when you're working heavily with your team, you want to get inspired by other teams around you that also work heavily. So location is important. Try to find out where the accelerator is located. Is it does it have a nice office space together with other people? Will there be other companies together with me? How many companies will there, will, will there be? Because that will influence you on how you perform. That's why everybody applies to Techstars, because everybody knows that Techstars attracts the best companies when it comes to technology and ICT and sitting together with the smartest bra startup brains <laughs> somewhere in New York or in uh, San Francisco or in London will of course also help you to uh, be even better and it will push you to work even harder. So it's good to be in an environment with other people that also are performing good. So the last thing an accelerator should do, and this is something that everybody says, is of course they will coach you and mentor you in order to grow your company. What should you look at? You should try to find out what mentors will the accelerator provide you with. Will it be guys like me and Michael who have 
a solid business background and started some companies before? Or will it be some people who had read in a book how it is to start a company? It's a big difference. Will it be people that are well connected that can help you to grow your business? Or will it be people who are focused on just doing the accelerator program? It's important. So the four things you should look at is time frame, funding, mentorship, network, and location. when you make your choice. And there are plenty to choose from. <laughs> and uh, I will show you where to find them later on. So I've been looking a bit at accelerator programs, especially in the US. And some of them are also located nowadays in Europe. And just to kind of give you a glance of, OK, who are the ones that are from kind of a <laughs> maybe not objective, but still perspective, the coolest one or the ones that have succeeded the most. Well, the original accelerator was Techstars, founded in, I think, 2002 or 2003. Uh, they have been doing this for, for a while. They are now present also in Europe. They have an office in London, and they're starting up, I think, in Berlin as well. Um, and of course, as the name say, they only focus on tech. So if you run an ICT company or something with Internet of Things or these uh, uh, topics, well, tech stars, and you're willing to move, <laughs> tech stars could, of course, be the obvious choice. And it's also the one that has the highest competition, I would say. Then there are some other ones in the US that are performing quite good. Uh, 500 Startups is kind of regarded as the coolest one from what I hear in California because they have really, they have done it a bit differently. They started recreating a huge network of people that had started companies. So they have, I think, a really, really good, at least what my friends in California say, they have a really, really good, good network of good mentors. So if you're going to the US thinking of spending three months in accelerator, well, these are the ones that you should uh, look out for. Uh, Dream It Ventures is another one focusing more on the US East Coast. They are in New York, Philadelphia, and uh, I think Miami, actually. So they're focusing more on the other side. If you are have a startup and you are into media or retail, maybe you should look at the US uh, East Coast instead if you're thinking of going to, to the US because you will find the customers there. You might not find the coolest companies, but the customers are on the East Coast and the coolest companies are on the West Coast. Um, then if we lo look at, uh, and then of course you also have a Y Combinator that is uh, big in the US. If we look at Europe, there are some actors in Europe that are growing quite fast and are quite big. Uh, Vira, uh, owned by uh, a mobile operator in Southern Europe called Telefonica. It's the one of the largest mobile operators in in the world. Um, they run accelerator programs in London, Ireland, uh, let's see if I have it in my head, There's Munich and Frankfurt and Prague and maybe some, some more places, and Spain of course, <laughs> uh, since they're a, a Spanish company. Um, so if you, um, and they have quite a good reputation. And um, for some reason, if you are a startup from Sweden, um, they will regard you as somebody who knows what you're talking about. Because Swedes have a really good reputation out, out in Europe, and you should kind of take advantage of, of that. I mean, the, the, the reputation, we shouldn't underestimate um, the help we have got from Skype and Spotify and Minecraft and these uh, huge companies that are uh, kind of hot still. And um, which means that when you say that you are a company from Sweden, they will think, okay, maybe it's the next Spotify. We need to take a look at that. Um, uh, so why are all good? And uh, you also have, if you are into media, you could go to Axel Springer has a really good uh, plug and play accelerator in, uh, in Berlin. 
uh, working with uh, companies that are digitalizing the media sector. And then, of course, you have startup boot camp and all these that do more, more or less the same. There are also some good accelerators in, in, in Paris. So, uh, I mean, there are an, uh, a lot of, of accelerators to choose from. These are the biggest ones. Um, if we look at Europe and say, where do we find the accelerators as I refer to accelerators? Most of them are located in Paris, London, or Berlin. And of course, now somebody will say, oh, but don't we have any local accelerators here in Sweden? Well, there are some. <laughs> uh, but you also need to be humble and say that, yes, but if you go to these cities, you will, will find the accelerators that has been doing this for at least five or six years, which means that they had the reputation and, and the possibility to grow your company. And I don't think, personally, it's a bad thing to go out of your comfort zone, go to Berlin, it's only 50 minutes away, <laughs> be there for three months, grow your company, and then you can move back and continue. Because then you, you will have, have a network, you have learned something, and you also have good access into the German market, which is one of the biggest markets in, in Europe. So, uh, so it's not a bad thing, I think, to, to move. Um, um, so these are the places. Um, I have also looked a bit at the application process. And luckily most of the accelerators have quite lean application processes. Uh, everybody, of course, have different. Uh, uh, sometimes you would wish that there was kind of a standard for doing this, but of course there is not. Um, they will, you will need to write a business plan to get in there if you go beyond the first phase. So normally they have a very easy web page application where you just write something about your business ID, your team, and then at that point, you should focus everything on your team. Because I talked, to, when I was in the US, I think I talked to five or 10 people from uh, the main accelerators uh, uh, on the East Coast at that time. And they all said the same, that, well, they look at the people that apply. And in the normal situation, they want you to be a team. So if some of you now have your startup and you're on your own, maybe you should consider, if you want to go into an accelerator, to find somebody that could share your vision and do it together with. And that is kind of based on that they look at success rate and they see that, that companies that start up and consist of a team of a team from the beginning are more successful than, than kind of one-man shows. It doesn't mean that it is a big problem to be alone in, in the beginning, but if you want to go into an accelerator program, the accelerator would prefer you to be more than one person. And that's normally what they say. And personally, I think it's more fun to be more than one person when you start a company. So, uh, so uh, I think that, that that is the most important thing to think about when you do the application, that how do I describe my team? Do I have the right people, people with me? Uh, or if I don't, do I know somebody that I would like to take into my company that would be willing to risk three months of, of time to go to Berlin and sit in, in an accelerator or even do it here, here in Sweden, of course. Um, do we have any local uh, accelerators in Sweden or in Malmo, even in Malmo? Well, there are some. Um, um, some guys just started something called Healthy Habits, which is a health accelerator program situated at Startup Studio up uh, in the center of town. Uh, 
it's recently started, but I think it's a really, really good initiative. And then there is, of course, Think in Helsingborg, uh, which uh, are having the first, I think, graduation. Now they have Demo Day next week, I think, 25th. So there are some. Um, and then you, Sting up in Stockholm have, uh, is probably the accelerator in s program in Sweden that has been going on for the longest time and they also are the most, I have to admit that even though I'm from Malmö, um, they have the most experience in Sweden I would say from accelerator program and they are doing it really, really, really well. They are placed at SUP46 in Stockholm which is kind of a very cool place as well. So um, there are some, lo uh, some locals but most of accelerators are located outside Sweden and since I no longer work for the local authorities here I would actually recommend you to look outside Sweden if you want to grow your company fast and you have the possibility to to move for a while then you can move back um, so if somebody asked me where would I go uh, I would probably go to Berlin because the competition in Berlin, at least at the moment, is lower. It's easier to get into an accelerator program in Berlin than to get in a, into an accelerator program, for instance, in the US. Uh, and the network in Berlin is good. And the money in Berlin is good as well. Most of the big US VC funds are also having offices in Berlin nowadays. So Berlin is uh, a good place to go. Uh, secondly, I would probably go to London. Uh, why? Because London has the highest density of ICT startups in Europe at the moment. So if you want to be together with other ICT startups, um, competing with them about the talent, because that's the biggest problem in, in, in London, I would go to London. Third, if I think that, okay, but London, Berlin, I don't know if that's really good good for me. And the weather in Berlin or London, it's crappy. Um, I would actually go to Lisbon. There are some really cool accelerators in Lisbon. And if you have a product that you're thinking of selling in South America, of course, Portugal is a perfect place to be. Because they have fantastic uh, relations with Brazil, uh, where they also speak Portuguese. And they also have created a very good flow of companies to the US. So, uh, and there are some good accelerators there. Finally, where do we find all these accelerators? Uh, either you can Google accelerators in Europe, that's uh, good, and then you will get about uh, 10,000 answers. Or you can go to, um, there are some places you can go. You could go to AngelList if you look into US. But if you look into Europe, I could recommend you this page, uh, f6s.com. As you can see, there are 8,745 different accelerators programs to uh, choose between. So there are some listed, list, listed here. I will not bore you with the... Uh, a demo now. You can just do this tonight when you get home and you think, oh shit, I need to go go into an accelerator. Then just go here and see. You can, yeah, as you can see, you can um, find almost every, everything you, you, you want. This is probably the, the best place to find most of the accelerator programs in Europe at the, at the moment. <laughs>